the map, man. Welcome one, welcome all. Are you ready to go on a new adventure? A voyage to the sunken city. And we'll do so by looking at the cards. This expansion is also going to bring up a major change up because with this expansion, we'll rotate out three expansions, Outlands, Skull and Mance, and Dark Moon Fair. And also the core set is going to change around some cards. So let's look at the cards in this set. First of all, we've got Blade Master Akani. Uh, and this guy is out right now. Uh, log in and you'll get him. Four mana, two, six. Battle cry, secretly choose to counter the next minion or spell your opponent plays while this is alive. If they're casting any spell and you get rid of it, then this was basically a plus one card advantage and you made them spend some mana. So three mana, two, six, draw a card, kind of. Uh, if you counter their minion, then, you know, it's the same thing. Basically, if you successfully counter, you're doing really well. The mind games come in because sometimes you're playing against a spell-heavy deck, which is going to play, like, a very few amount of minions, such as Kazakus or the Quest Reward, and you play out Blade Master Akani, and they have to play around it, and sometimes they can't test with very many minions. So maybe they have to uh, remove this guy with a spell, even though they really want to. Of course, the worst case scenario for Akani is if your opponent already has six attack worth of minions on the board, then they don't have to test for Akani, they just kill the very understated 4 mana 2 6. Host rotation, I could definitely see it as a disruption, good in a tempo y or mid rangey type of deck. So, moving along to one of the new mechanics of this set it's a colossal minion. This minion is so big. That one card isn't enough. The Colossal Plus indicates how many other minions it's bringing alongside its main thing. And that comes out whether you find a way to summon it from your deck or whether you play it from your hand. Kalak, a druid legendary, 7 mana 6 5, Colossal Plus 1, immune while you control Kalak Shell. And Kalak Shell is a 5 mana 0 8. With Taunt and Death Rattle gain 8 armor. So if you add up the stats, it's uh, 613 for 7 uh, with Taunt and with Gain 8 Armor. And it has upside because Kalak itself is immune while you control Kalak Shell, and it's not very easy to kill Kalak Shell. Uh, but on the other hand, it's not really 613 because a lot of the health is associated with a zero attack minion. They just kill the shell for no resources if they have the board, and then Kalak's a 7 mana 6 5. While the good news is against aggro decks, you are gaining 16 health, uh, which is a lot of health against an aggro deck as they beat away at the shell, which gives you armor, and then, you know, they groan about it. So Kalak's a pretty efficient card. Could definitely see it in some sort of ramp druid or some sort of mid-range druid that's countering aggro decks in particular, or perhaps just a decent mid-range pick. So did you like Colossal Minions? Well, Ambassador Phelan uh, four mana, four or five. Bellacry put three colossal minions on the bottom of your deck. You could make sure that the end part of your deck has three big threats to finish things out. But of course, you don't just want to wait until the end of the game necessarily to do that. There's a new mechanic that'll fetch these colossal minions from the bottom of your deck. Tuscar Trawler. Two mana, two, three pirate with Bellacry Dredge. What is Dredge? Uh, Dredge lets you look at the bottom three cards of your deck and choose one to put on the top of the deck. Probably a major mechanic of this set is going to be to put things onto the bottom of your deck, uh, probably good stuff, treasures and whatnot, and you're going to dredge them up. We're going to have to see whether or not something is printed that puts something really good at the bottom of your deck. I don't think Phelan is that because uh, Colossal Minions are cards you could just normally put in the deck. I'm talking about like cards that are generated that are better than the average card that you could put in your deck. Uh, that's the type of card you'd want Dredge for. Uh, you want to dig for that good treasure. At its worst, Dredge is like Sightless Watcher, which looks at three cards from your deck and then puts one on the top. It doesn't actually really matter where in the deck you're looking, unless you specifically set your deck up to take advantage of the fact that your good cards are on the bottom of the deck. Which again, could really happen with this expansion. Just haven't seen the cards for that yet. And then final mechanic of the set is there's a new tribe. It's called Naga. Naga are cards that you want to do stuff with while the Naga is in your hand. 
Or alternatively, you want to play Naga while the Naga Lover is in your hand. Spell Coiler is a mage 2 mana 2 3 Naga. With Battlecry, if you've cast a spell while holding this, discover a spell. Spell Coiler is neither better nor worse than Wand Thief. Battlecry effect is both easier and harder sometimes. Coin Spell Coiler is going to be a really strong turn one play if you have the coin. Uh, but sometimes you don't have the coin. Uh, and then you'd have to put this into a mage deck with small spells and minions. Haven't seen a deck archetype with small spells and minions yet, but uh, Spell Coiler is working towards that. But certainly, if you have a deck which has small spells, then Spell Coiler looks like a great card. As Shaoran Sweeper is also a mage card, 3 mana 3 4 mech with Battlecry put a Sunken Sweeper on the bottom of your deck. The Sunken Sweeper is a 3 mana 3 4 that has Battlecry add 3 random mechs to your hand. This is an example of the type of good quality card that you want to put on the bottom of your deck in order to dredge up. However, the problem is perhaps it's not good enough to do that song and dance for yet. But the point is, if there's enough cards in a deck that put really good cards on the bottom of the deck, and if there are efficient ways to fish out cards from the bottom of your deck, then this entire mechanic could be really cool and could work out pretty well. As stands, it's going to be a, and eh, this isn't excited enough to make me want to dredge up the sunken sweeper yet. But hey, if there are cards that do put really good cards on the bottom of your deck, Sir Finley, the Sea Guide, is here to help you out. 1 mana, 1 3 Murloc, Battlecry, swap your hand with the bottom of your deck. So there's two worlds where Sir Finley Sea Guide is going to be really good in. World number one, and this is going to be a pretty likely world because it seems like what the set is going to be designed around. If there are cards that put really good cards on the bottom of your deck, then Sir Finley the Sea Guide is going to sweep up a bunch of those cards, and then cha-ching! You've got a super strong hand. Uh, this is going to reward some sort of value or control deck. Number two, there's already cards in the meta which really upgrade your deck's quality, such as Kazaku-san. And if you play Kazaku-san, and then you play Sir Finley's Sea Guide, then your hand is suddenly going to be full of treasures, like literal treasures that Kazakistan gave it to you. Option three is if you have specifically a one card combo deck, which is you're searching for specifically one card and only one card to play, I could see Sir Finley's Sea Guide doing that. And that would be in something like Quest Priest, where if you literally draw the shard at the end of the game, you win the game. Even if you miss getting the shard with Sir Finley's Sea God, uh, that means that the chances that you draw the shard are dramatically increased because your whole previous hand is on the bottom of the deck, which means the top of the deck has a much higher chance of having the shard. If you're playing a combo deck, you don't want Sir Finley's Sea Guide because you would put your combo cards on the bottom of the deck. But if you're looking for exactly one card, then Sir Finley is a chance to get rid of your hand and then like draw a very large amount of cards and then have a pretty decent chance of finding that one card that you want. Shivering Sunfish! 3 mana 2 5 beast, Battlecry if you're holding a holy spell, gain taunt and divine shield. Look at that happy little fish! It's so happy and it's so efficient. Very very good mid-range paladin card. It uh, just requires that there actually be good holy spells. Remember that Librams are rotating out, so there's almost certainly going to be holy spells added in the core set and or this expansion. Knowing how good this card, as well as Katori Lightblade, a 2 mana 2 3 after you cast a holy spell on this, cast it again on another friendly minion. Uh, these two cards really depend on how good the holy cards are going to be for Paladin. Fun fact, the literal only card that works with Katori Lightblade Post rotation that we know of so far in standard is hold the bridge. So, like I say, uh, we're going to need to see what the holy spells are before making our judgment on Katori Lightblade and on Shimmering Sunfish. But these guys are a good baseline for if there's reasonable holy spells, it looks like there's going to be a decent mid range paladin deck that is going to run Shimmering Sunfish and Katori Lightblade. And even if they don't come out this expansion, 
you gotta keep your eye out on these cards because they could pop up in another expansion. Hey, look! Warlocks are getting a Murloc! Do you remember back in the day when Warlock Murloc was a thing? I would have definitely popped the shield with the Void Walker. I wouldn't necessarily have. Whoa! Oh my god! Are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> Raise your kappas right now. Wow. Oh I'm, my I'm god. <laughs> I can't believe it. He can't believe it. He looks at us, he looks at Chop, and he's like, no fucking way. Blood Send Valfin. Four mana, four, four Murloc. Balakrai Dredge. If it's a Murloc, change its cost to health instead of mana. This card isn't strong enough to make the entire archetype come back by itself. You're gonna need quite a lot of Murloc support for this to actually be a thing. But if Murloc Warlock is a thing, this is good enough to make it into that deck, certainly. It is amusing to think of the idea of a deck, though, which somehow tosses your Mutinous onto the bottom of your deck, and then you dredge up Mutinous with your Blood Send Filefin, and then you have a killer turn the next turn, or the turn of if you play Filefin and then tap, uh, and then just play Mutinous. That's a big swing turn. I can't possibly imagine how you would consistently get a big murloc onto the bottom of your deck yet but this card hints that there's going to be either a murloc warlock deck or a way to put some sort of giant murloc onto the bottom of your deck a rogue you got bootstrap bill i mean bootstrap sunken ear five mana four four pirate combo put an enemy minion on the bottom of your opponent's deck this is a better vile spine slayer Instead of a 5 mana 3 4 destroy a minion, 5 mana 4 4 put an enemy minion on the bottom of your opponent's deck. So that means not only do you destroy it, you basically silence it as well. And it's on the bottom of their deck. Which is only ever bad if they're playing a dredge deck and they could find that card. But if they're playing a dredge deck, again my theory is that uh, they probably wouldn't want to spend it on just a normal minion. Great card for a Tempo Rogue. Basically would be played in any deck that Valspine Slayer would have been played in. Uh, Tempo Rogue. Serpent Wig is a Priest card, which is another showcase of how the Naga are going to play. Uh, one mana spell, give a minion plus one plus one. If you played a Naga while holding this, add a Serpent Wig to your hand. It's a very puzzling card, and... The idea of this card is clearly going to be to put it in a Priest Naga Zoo deck. Now, it is far too early to, first of all, see if a Priest deck with Naga is viable. But secondly, it would need to be specifically a Priest Naga Zoo deck. That is so very specific, but I am looking forward to seeing the Nagas that will be in the set. And we'll close it out with a big one. It's Xylig of the Abyss, a Demon Hunter Legendary. 7 mana, 3, 6 Demon. Colossal plus 4! At the start of your turn, increase the damage of Xylag's stocks by 1. So whenever you put Xylag out, and again, this doesn't mean you have to pay 7 mana and play him, you could summon him from your hand, and that would work. You could resurrect it somehow and that would work. However you bring Xylag out, he's going to fill your board with four of the Xylag stocks, which at the end of your turn deal one damage to a random enemy and are one twos. Which means if you add up all the stats on Xylag, it's a seven, 14 for seven mana, uh, which immediately has like kind of a half rag neurose effect of four damage dealt to random enemies. That is a really efficient card it's pretty difficult to deal with Xylag uh, efficiently with a response card because either you have small AoE and leave Xylag of the Abyss up, you have one big removal for the Xylag, but then you still have four stocks. It's just really efficient. And if you have a deck, as Demon Hunters might have, uh, which wants to see a bunch of small guys die, well, Xylag stocks are pretty small. So there you have it, your first dive into the voyage to the sunken city. It's a cool idea for a set, and certainly with cards mechanics like this, it looks like the gameplay may slow down 
and be more control centric? Maybe? More value centric? Certainly you're gonna need a lot of time if you're having a plan to put cards onto the bottom of your deck and then to fish them out. Uh, certainly that type of value deck would never work while there were super aggro decks or combo one turn kill decks in the format. Uh, but with the rotation of three sets and a change in the core set, there's going to be a lot of changes. So, any fin is possible. <laughs>